All right, it's good to be in the Lord's house. Uh, we're just a little bit early here, but we have some prayer requests tonight. Sister Pat Hudson took a fall and hurt her knee, and so I told Sister Pat we'd be praying for her. And then her granddaughter-in-law, Janet Bennett, was injured in a four-wheeler accident, and so they've requested prayer for Janet. She's married to Kyle, Scott and Reese's sons, uh, Kyle. And then uh, Sister Pat mentioned a young man, didn't give me any details, just said he was 20 years of age. His name is Hector, and he has leukemia. Let's also pray for our sister Karen tonight because of her situation. They've kind of uh, give her orders not to be out and about. And I, I know uh, them people, Brother Gary, that get shut in and closed in. It, it can just get so lonely. So Sister Kay, if you joined us by Facebook, we're going to pray a special prayer for you tonight. Does anybody else have prayer needs, prayer requests tonight? Okay. Um, Yes. So, Brother Leslie Norris's daughter, Leslie, and family needs our prayer. Uh, there's another brother that we were made aware of that uh, was was hospitalized with the virus. Maybe Varner is his name. And they were requesting prayer. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you because you're faithful. Father, we thank you because we can call upon your name. And Lord, you're closer than our very breath. And tonight, God, you know the needs that have been mentioned. And Father, as we gather in your house to study your word, we pray that your spirit would just reach out to those who are shut in, we have several in our church family, Lord, that are unable to be in the house of God and pray that you touch them, the names that have been called. And Father, have your way in this Bible study, Lord, whether they're here live in the sanctuary or by Facebook, or we, we just ask that you touch our hearts and our minds. Open the word of God to us, Lord. Help us hear what your spirit is saying. Help us learn and be taught by your spirit. Give us revelation, knowledge, and understanding, and we'll give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this mic is a little hotter tonight and a little hotter than I'm used to. And we hope everybody can hear real good. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, Brother Gary has a mic, Brother Ernie's got a mic, and uh, any, any questions or any answers to questions, we would appreciate you just jumping in there. Uh, now, we've, we've been in Matthew's Gospel, the 24th chapter, and we've had supporting verses from Daniel and, and, and the book of Revelation, other, other verses. And, and we're going to get into that. But, but also, uh, I, just, I, I just live with a burden for our country. Now, folks, I'm a sojourner. And if you're a child of God, you're a pilgrim passing through. We know we're not home yet. But I still love my country. And it grieves me when I see what's going on uh, in America today. It, it's a spiritual problem. It, it is rebellion to God. It's men living selfish and um, covetously, materialistically, unholy, unthankful, ungrateful. And, and until we can get it right with God, uh, you sow to the wind and you're going to reap the whirlwind. And if we don't keep God in the middle of it, someone or something is going to rule men. If God is not the king of your heart, either an idol God or mammon, something or someone and men. Let me, let me tell you something, folks. There are men, be it a Hitler, 
uh, Sodom insane, Hussein, or whatever, uh, Castro's from Cuba, there are those who would like to rise to, to always rule over men. And uh, that's God's position. God created us to love him and serve him. In some of my reading and my study, I, I brought a little something tonight. You say, Pastor, what's it have to do with Matthew 24? Well, you know, really, if you press me real hard, I would just tell you it has everything to do with Matthew 24 because if you're an honest Bible student, you cannot be living in these days and, and not be talking about uh, birth pain, uh, birth pains and labor pains and indications of, of the end days. I put the little tease on Facebook announcing Bible study and I said, do you ever wonder if the Antichrist is alive and in the world today? And I've heard people say, yeah, I believe he's alive and he's here. Well, we definitely know his spirit is here, but e even in our country, and, and I know, and nobody can tell me we were not founded as a Christian nation. We were, our history proves it. That's why they want to deny it and fight it. And I absolutely believe that sedition and anarchy has taken place in our, in our country today. Now, uh, there are people that lay in the wings in our country lay on the their outliers and they just wait for critical things to happen and then they come out of their closet to to use it uh, to to undermine liberty and freedom and and our national interest now you say well now you're a preacher and you're not supposed to mix politics and i have always tried to be so careful to to realize there's different stripes there's there's differing opinions there's different i understand all that and i'm not my, my burden tonight is not Democrat and Republican. My burden is rightness with God. And, and my burden is, is the harvest. And knowing that we were founded as a, as a godly nation, and, and I see, and, and we know that in the end times, friend, all the nations of this world, including America, they, they have to come down. And, and they will come down. But I want to read a little quote that I brought to you from 1939. Now, you're not going to find it in your Bible, but it's going to walk around spiritual ideas, and it's by Winston Churchill. And, and I wrote it down. I'm not really a manuscript preacher. I normally just try to pack my heart and my mind, but once in a while I like to just slow down and look at it. And look what, relative to Hitler and uh, Winston Churchill being in a position to defend England and the, the Brits and all of that, he said, but if we fail, then the whole world, including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age. And Hitler had declared that England must fall. Communism, the new world order, I believe they've declared America must fall. I really do. I really do. Now, my greatest burden is be ready for the rapture of Jesus Christ. Folks, don't be indifferent about the plan and the program of God, regardless of what happens in America, other than what's happening in real time in our lives ought to stir us up to the fact, to the plan of God. And we've read the end of the book, God is going to win. And really relative to Matthew 24, I see things on every hand coming together, positioning us to fulfill Matthew 24, things that have not happened yet that are going to happen. 
But Winston Churchill stood before his parliament and he declared that the battle for Britain was at hand. And, and I'll be honest with you, in 2020, I believe the battle for America is at hand. Our very soul, our very religious liberty. Who would have ever thought, you know, I started in 2019 praying about vision 2020 and talked to you about it. Anticipated going to the parks, anticipated taking hope on the road and COVID and Corona hit us. And I think they've overblown it. I'm not saying people hadn't gotten sick. I know of people who, who have tested, but I do think they've overblown it. And I think there are, there's a whole ball of wax that is going on here, really do. And I think the underlying battle, the greater battle is, is about God. It, it's, it's about who would have thought in 2020 Preachers would have been arrested for having church. And even when they tried to comply with not being in the sanctuary, they said, we'll have it in the parking lot. And, and, and elderly people that showed up to go to church, well, they drove the young people out because of the virus, so to speak. They was writing tickets in the church parking lot. And then we have a governor in our own country uh, tell the churches and the synagogues, if you don't obey our ma mandate, we'll just see about shutting you down permanently in the United States of America. And so tickets for setting in parking lot to even have church outside, it's just crazy. And I think there are deeper, deeper things going on in our country. So here we have people in the sanctuary tonight for Bible study. It makes me want to weep right now. We need to give ourselves to the word of God. We need to be a voice of encouragement. And I'm not a downer. I'll tell you something that blessed my heart. I'm just going to visit a little bit with you tonight. We're going to jump in this word if it takes us a month and a half. Hey, we're not going anywhere, are we? Unless Jesus slips us out of here, we'll just come back next Wednesday and keep hammering at the word. But my daughter come into our house the other day and uh, uh, we don't see her enough, but we saw her the other day and she said our 14 year old grandson told his mom, mom, we got to, speaking of his siblings, he said, we got to get them up. We got to get them around. We got to get them in here and we got to get them in the word. We got to have devotions. I know life is busy. It's, it's hard to slow down and take the time, but we got to do it. And I was so proud of him. And he said, and you know, mom, in these last days, it, it's not going to be easy to stand but, but we're gonna to have to stand for Christ. And it really touched Kelly's heart. How many of you know it touches all of our hearts? For our kids, we want to get it through to our kids. So I perceive America in the same kind of battle in the year of 2020. I think, I think that while we're, we're not in the streets with the Civil War, like was thought back in the 1800s when my own grandpa Gaddy was born in the days of Lincoln and the Civil War, not my great grandpa, my grandpa. Sterling Price Gaddy was born in that era. I, I believe we're in a cultural and civil war and spiritual war for the soul and the direction of our country and our lives. And I believe all of it is the pressure points bringing us down. And I hear God shouting, wake up, wake up. I hear God saying, be ready, be watchful, be prayerful. And for people who would mock you for your belief in the rapture of the church, for people who would mock you for believing prophecy out of Matthew's gospel, the 24th chapter. Uh, friend, let me tell you, I lived in an era in the church world 
they preach the coming of the Lord. Brother Ernie, I thought it wouldn't hurt me to get saved every service or at least make a trip to the altar. They made you believe Jesus could come at any moment and you better be ready. And I want to tell you right now, I want to make a clarion call and I don't back up. I'm not embarrassed to say it. I believe Jesus could come anytime. And friend, you talk about terror. Those of us that have known grandma and grandpa's God, those of you who's had a daddy and a mama who may be with the Lord, but instilled in you in faith. And one of these days when they disappear in the rapture of the church, if you're not prepared, if you're not ready and you don't go, you talk about terror in the hearts and the lives of people. It's going to happen. It's going to take place. And one day people are going to disappear from this world. Ready or not, he's coming. And we want to be ready. And so, I don't know. I just wanted to get a little bit of this off of my heart tonight. And I don't mean to be distracting. Um, and my citizenship and my conversations in heaven. I love America and I pray for America while I'm traveling through but I'm with the believers in Hebrews 11. Friend, I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. And the Lord's preparing a city for us. That's why he's going to come back and get us. He's been working on it for 2,000 years. And I'm telling you, I believe that the church of Jesus Christ is subject to disappear at any time. Now, last week, so let's, let's hit Matthew 24. Let me just do a little digression here and back up a little bit. We, we talked about, and I believe that the scripture teaches that the tribulation period is for Israel. Uh, I believe that that 70th week that Daniel received a revelation for 490 years uh and, and, you know, we get into the sevens and the seventies and figure it up. Well, we know that 483 years have already taken place. Uh, we know that uh, the second temple was destroyed and it was defiled. No stone left laid upon it. And I, I don't want to rehash all that, but just to bring you up to, to speed and, and those that are with us on Facebook, there's an outstanding seven year period of time. Uh, there are 483 years, seven years will take them to the uh, 490 years being fulfilled, uh, the 70s uh, of seven years. And the tribulation period is that one week, that seven year period. Now, Israel tonight is waiting for the man to come on the scene to cut a covenant with them, promising safety and security. They're waiting for that. They're so ready to sign a seven year contract. They've been out of the temple worship for 2000 years. They got everything ready for the animal blood to flow again because they've missed the Messiah. And that has everything to do with that 70th week, Jacob's trouble, O oh, Israel, 70 years I've determined against thee, Jacob. Is, and they're going to find themselves in that 70th week that I believe is after the rapture of the church, the tribulation period. Israel is going to have a covenant signed with the Antichrist, that man of sin who could be alive. His spirit is sure in the world. Antichrist spirit is growing. Rejection of God, rejection of his church, rejection of truth is growing every day. They put preachers, took them out of their church, took them to jail over this virus in America. I mean, think about it. Someone said, well, they deserve to go. Well, I don't know. But it, it, it did happen. Well, when the man of sin cuts covenant with Israel, it's going to go real good for the first three and a half years. And in the middle of that week, he's going to break the covenant. And Israel is going to have to fly for her life. 
Did you know that during Hitler's reign, about half of the Jews were killed? About five and a half million, six million Jews were killed. Did you know your Bible teaches that the greatest Holocaust for the Jewish people is still ahead? And they estimate as many as 10 million will be killed in the coming Holocaust. Did you know that's in your Bible? And we're going to read about that tonight. Because when he cuts or when he breaks the covenant, that's when the Lord had told him, pray your flight's not in winter. That you can get out of Dodge. How many of you has ever heard of Petra in the Bible? To get to Petra, you have to go in southern uh, Judah, and it is a it is there is a very very narrow passageway into Petra. It is a fortified, cut out of sandstone, walled city. People used to inhabit and live in there. Uh, and I have known the statistics in my life. But it's a, just a very, very norm, narrow passage way to get in there. And we're talking about walls like 250 feet high. And when Israel has to flee the Antichrist... And there's where the slaughter is going to take place. All of them's not going to be able to run. All of them's not going to be able to escape from their life. Now, I'm not a numbers man. Math wasn't my great uh, uh, study. But I can read that somebody that does. And they're estimating as many as 10 million Jews are going to be slaughtered in that. But they're going to run into Petra. And in that walled rock fortress God is going to protect a remnant of the Jews and, and they will be saved and they will be spared in that fortif fortification and the Lord's going to feed them the Lord's going to care for them until the indignation how many of your life have heard of the mark of the beast you've heard of the antichrist You've heard of the tribulation period. How many of you has ever heard of the battle of Armageddon? How many of you know it hadn't taken place either? But how many of you know they're getting prepared for the battle of Armageddon? How many of you know vultures are taking this world over? They're getting ready too. We're seeing vultures in, in areas of the world we've never seen them before. They're multiplying exponentially. How do you like that college word? That's that compounding factor. I mean, they're, they're uh, in the Holy Lands. They're getting ready for the supper. And uh, right when it looks like Israel will surely be destroyed, where the Bible said, unless those days be shortened, the very elect, which is not the church, is Israel in the tribulation period, could not and would not be saved. God's going to have to intervene. And all the nations of the world are going to be gathered against Israel. And Antichrist is going to be at the lead of the armies of the world to finally destroy her and wipe her off the map. And all of a sudden, their Messiah, the one that they rejected, who brought their trouble upon them for a season. They were that natural. You can read about it in Romans 11. They were the natural branch in the olive tree. And God said for a season, I'm going to cut you off and I'm going to remove you out of the tree. And I'm going to graft in a wild branch, the Gentiles. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. If you're a Gentile, you can't be a Jew. But he has grafted us in and we're having church right now and they're out of church. But we're very, very soon with the day and age of the church, the church age is going to end and God's going to fully turn back to the redemption of Israel. And he's going to use that tribulation period. He's going to use the tribulation period to wake up the church. 
Now, I, now there are preachers who don't believe any Gentiles would be saved. Well, I don't know what they do at the verse of Scripture where John said he saw a number under the altar that no man could number out of every nation, kindred, and tongue. John said he saw it in the Revelation. And that can't just be Jews. But his main focus is going to be to reveal Jesus to them and them come to their Messiah. And then your Bible says, and all of Israel shall be saved. Now, what I've already laid out and laid down, and we're going to start reading scripture here. Does anybody want to jump in and make any, Brother Gary? Go ahead, Brother. I'm going to refer back. I'm going to refer back when you made the statement that it doesn't matter whether it's a Republican, Democrat, Independent. It, if you read back into the story of the Exodus when Joshua was fixing to take over Jericho, it says that he, a, a man stood off him with a sword drawn in his hand, and Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for the adversary? Or against us, he right. He didn't say, well, Are you a Republican right. or a Democrat right. or Independent? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. So what this boils down to is are you for Christ or are you against Christ? Right, right. So if you're praying for America to be reestablished again, if you're not praying for a Christian America to be reestablished again, you're wasting your time because if the Lord isn't in the battle, then you're going to lose. Right. So a house right. divided and, and saints, listen, the unity it is so vital among the, the godly and the brotherhood. But, but again, with, with relative to what you said, Brother Gary, the Bible said a house divided against itself shall not stand. That's not opinion. The Lord, it doesn't matter if it's your, my, your house, my house, the White House, the church house. A divided house. Why do you think there's so much divorce in the land? Somewhere division entered and it broke hearts and it broke lives and it brought the foundation down. And, and that's the danger of where we're at in our country with, with sin and, and uh, it, it's, it's division and it's destructive. Okay, let's... Uh, I don't know if anybody here tonight remembers the very exact verse that we stopped on, but we're going to be back and forth, so it really don't matter. Let's start at verse number 15. And if any of you want to jump ahead or, or even drop back, and you that are on Facebook with us, I hope you've got your Bibles. We want to encourage you, and it really doesn't matter what Daryl Gaddy believes. I'm not too impressed with I love preachers. I'm a preacher. Give my whole life to the ministry. But I want to know what the Bible said. And just because a preacher said it doesn't make it true. Let's see. Let's look to the word of God. And let's establish it in truth. And if I tell you something contrary to the word of God, run from it. But if it's in the word, say, man, oh me, oh my. All right. Now, here, you, you can go back, and can I give you this? Because I can't get you all the verses of Scripture. That clock says it's already 7 o'clock. I can't believe I ran my mouth already for 30 minutes. You can, but I can't. Uh, but here's the thing about it. In Daniel, the 8th chapter, along with Matthew 24, you need to really tear up and, and dig into Daniel 8 and 9, and particularly Daniel 9. But he said, When you therefore shall see the abomination and desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Here's what's going to be happening. The Jews, when they get that third temple opened, the blood's going to run again. They've, they've got the red heifer. They've got all the garments. They've got everything ready to have church. And everything's going to be going real good. But the pride, the hate for God's people, for the Jews and Christianity in the world, because there are people going to turn their heart to God in the tribulation period. Do I hear a weak amen? amen. It ain't going to be an easy thing, but it will happen. There's going to be some who were taught there's a rapture of the church and they're going to wake up and find themselves 
in the tribulation period and there's going to be a group of people that know what it's going to take if they're ever going to be with God and any of their saved folk. It's not going to be a pretty picture, but everything's going to be looking great. Israel's safe, man, they're having church. The sacrifices are flowing and the Antichrist, his hatred and his power and, and, and his desire to be God is, is going to eat him up to the point that he's going to come right in and he's going to break the covenant with them three and a half uh, years in. And that's why we talk about the last year. You talk about if you think things are bad in the country today. Matthew 24 said there's coming a day that's never been in the world. And after that day comes, it'll never be another day in the world again like this one. And that's when untold slaughter and holocaust of the Jews is going to happen again. And he's going to stop their worship in the temple. And, and there's going to be destruction and mayhem. That's what you're reading about here. And, and in... In this revelation, the Lord speaking to those who will experience this, it's not the church, it's to the Jews. He said, let them in Judea flee into the mountains. And if you study this out, this is where you will find the city of Petra is that fortified area where those Jews that are going to run for their lives and not be slaughtered in Jerusalem, they're going to escape to that fortified place that I talked to you. And he said this event is going to happen so quickly. Hey, it's like the rapture of the church. The only thing you're going to have time to do is hear the trump sound and fly away. I, I laugh. I, I have a lot of good times with Jack Legrand through the years. And, and uh, he came by my house, and of course he's with the Lord now, but he came by my house one day and he said, Brother Darrell, he said, I had a dream. He said, I'd kind of like for you to help me understand. And he said, uh, the rapture took place and I was trying to jump and I was trying to go. And I said, well, I'll tell you exactly what that means. You missed the rapture, Jack. His head turned as red as that offering bucket right there. I'm not kidding. His, and then we just about fell on the floor with a belly. I mean, you know, it didn't go me no laughing matter then. But just the way I interpreted his dream, I said, well, Jack, that means you missed it because you ain't going to be doing no jumping. He's going to snatch you and take you. And so we, we had some good fellowship. Uh, honey, let me tell you, there's going to be some sick people after the trump of God. And when that Antichrist devil turns on the Jews and starts slaughtering them, in the city by the millions. And, and there are theologians that will tell you, how many of you know the, uh, the Jews get the call? Uh, I forget the fancy word that they call it when they go back home. But you know, Jews all over the world, they're wanting to go back to Israel. It's, it's innate in them and it's a spiritual calling where they can go back to their land. Uh, there are people who've given their life to study this. They said on the day this happens, Brother Gary, there could be as many as 15 million Jews in the land of, of, of Israel at, at the time of this happening. And if the Bible said that two thirds of them are killed, there's where they get the 10 million of them and, and maybe about 5 million was right. Did you want to share? Yeah, uh, I just heard on the news the other day because of the rioting and and the Black Lives Matter movement and against the Jews that over 250,000 Jews since this started have left the United States and returned to Israel. Yeah, anti-Semitism is going to drive them even back to their land too, you know. And of course, they tried to escape all Dutch, Holland, uh, all of those places before Hitler came in to kill them. Some of them escaped, some of them went to the gas chamber and, and he, he was warning them about the time that this flight, uh, if it happened in winter, how many of you know you're traveling and running very fast, doesn't work, right? He said, don't let him come down, verse 18. Don't let him uh, uh, 
which is in the field return back to his clothes and woe unto them that are with child. How many of you know a little nursing mama is not going to be, uh, Brother Steve, it isn't going to be very easy for mama to be running with the little ones running for their lives when, when somebody's killing them all around them. He said, but pray that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. I was talking uh, today and, and rethinking. Uh, any of you remember how far that under the law they could travel on the Sabbath day? One mile. Now I guess they could walk as much as they wanted to in the city, but if they left the city on the Sabbath, they they could only run uh, or, or, or go one mile. And I think maybe Petra somewhere, and don't hold me to it, don't quit the church over it, okay? This statistic. But somewhere it seemed to me, I, I think that getting to Petra is going to be something like maybe 50 miles or whatever. I don't, I, I think that's true. But uh, remember how the teachers always said, give your first answer on the test if you don't know. How many of you have ever liked me? You changed it anyway and you still got it wrong. All right, let's go. So now notice, here's what it is. They have quickly been thrust out of that time of peace. And I'll get you here in just a second then, Brother Ernie. And they're running for their lives. And he said, for then shall be great tribulation. And we believe this is that 70th week of Jacob's trouble. We believe this is the final seven years of the 490 years. This will complete that from 483 to the 490. And then this was when they'll say, this is the great tribulation and all hell is going to break loose. Go ahead, Brother Ernie. I had a guy tell me that uh, he wanted to go, he wanted to die before the rapture because uh, he spread in the Bible that the dead are in the prophet shall rise first. Amen. He wanted to be among the first. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, that's like that evangelist come in and said, just be the first church in the rapture because the Bible said the dead had rise first. Well, anyway, now let's look, look at it and notice here how horrible and how horrific it's going to be on the Jewish people. We talked about that Holocaust. They're facing the Jewish. It grieves me. It breaks my heart. You talk about an oppressed people. You, you talk about a hated people. You talk about a people that the Gentiles has trodden their land. But God's about to finish the Gentiles trodden uh, the Jewish people underfoot and their lands. Uh, and we know their nation was reborn in 48. And can I tell you, though all the armies of the world gather against, the Jews will never lose their home homeland again. They'll never be moved out again. We know prophetically that half of Jerusalem is gonna fall. And do you know during the time that half of Israel futuristically is going to fall, the women are going to be raped and ravished, and it's going to be a horrible, horrible hour. But they'll never be removed from their land because God said, Zion is mine, Israel is mine, she's the apple of my eye, and I will keep her, and I will guarantee her land. And look at it, though. He said, except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, the days shall be shortened. And friend, we're talking about the storms of Armageddon gathering and, and the Antichrist assuming military, religious power, all the authority of the world and the nations of the world gathering that they're going to once and for all, they're going to completely destroy the nation of Israel. All the armies of the world will be gathered around her. And they're gathering tonight. It's going to be to their own de demise. Brother Gary, did you have something? And please jump in or just, hey, wave your hands if, if I don't see you. Uh, the abomination and desolation spoke about Daniel prophet standing in the holy place. Am I correct in understanding that in the middle part of 
part of the tribulation. Yes, I, I believe that yeah. that is the teaching there. And so he's going to, you, you know, here's the thing about it. Their liturgical laws of the priesthood and washing and cleansing and everything being by the letter of the law, this antichrist, this, this man of sin, he's going to come in to the very holy of holies. He's going to come in to that brand new third temple that's been washed and sanctified and, and every, I mean, friend, they don't have a lamp. They don't have, they don't have an instrument in that building that hadn't been cleansed, Brother Space, and everything pure and holy. And he's going to come in and he is going to so disgrace that house that it's going to be an abomination. I mean, they're going to absolutely and completely understand that he's not their redeemer. He's not their Messiah. He's not the one that they thought was going to give them their kingdom on all the hopes. They're going to see we have believed another lie. And he's going to desecrate that, that temple, that house of worship. And, and what I understand to believe the middle of the week and then again uh, that's when the hatred and the bloodbath and, and anybody else got any statement questions any any directions relative to that it now you know the antichrist spirit there's there's all through time there's been people that have have uh, uh, appeared on the scene and claimed to be even in Jesus' day. Right. In the day of the Lord and in our days. I, I've teased through the years of Brother Ernie and I was talking a little bit about uh, uh, Danny Hudson and I feel bad Sister Pat didn't get to be with us but years ago down on South Locust uh, we had a guy show up there in Bible study and Danny Hudson greeted him and the guy said, I'm John the Baptist. And Danny said, well, I've read a lot about you. He, he, said, he, said, he said, I've read a lot about you in the word. And so it just tickled me. I said, Danny, what did you say to him? And he said, I, I, don't, I didn't get to meet him. John left before the service was over. But, you know, I mean, he probably thought he was John the Baptist, whether it was through drugs and drug abuse or demonized or whatever and, and so the Lord has always warned and Matthew 24 this is all listen this is all about being ready this is all about being prepared for days that are coming that are not going to be good and uh, I, I believe we can't escape it people want to talk about all oh, them people believe in the rapture just going to believe they're escaping escaping well, and Noah escaped, Elijah escaped, Lot escaped, children of Israel escaped Egypt. I, I can show a lot of places. Everybody's not going to be a martyr. Hey, I may get my head cut off. If somebody persecuted me and did that, I don't know. Uh, but everybody's not going to be a martyr. Some will receive a martyr's crown. And to say, well, because there's been martyrs in the world, the church has to stay here and be beat during the tribulation period. We, we have to be, believe the word, rightly divided, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little bit. And, and I'm not saying I have perfect understanding. I want to have, amen? Uh, but uh, I can only be honest if I teach where my heart has understanding. And I sure submit to people who have deeper understanding than myself. But I do believe there's a rapture. I believe the Lord is subject to come any time. And friend, all hell is going to rage on this planet. You want to be ready. And that's why I'm taking the time to teach in here tonight to encourage somebody listening by Facebook. You're not saved. You're not surrendering. Mama taught you right. Grandma taught you right. And you're living and doing your own thing. And you're not born again. You need to get saved and get ready. We're living in days. Jesus is going to come. 
Don't laugh, don't mock, don't be indifferent. Be ready and help somebody else be ready. I, I want to live ready, but I want to help somebody else be ready. Go ahead, Brother Gary. I'd like to kind of touch on current events if I could for just Yeah, minute. go ahead. Brother Gary's going to talk a little bit about current events. Uh, several brothers have asked me today about this vision or, or these dreams that a, a pastor, Dana Coverstone, has had. I have seen them. And uh, Dana Coverstone had a dream in, in January. He had the dream in March. He said there was going to be a pandemic in his dream. He's seen a pandemic in his dream. In June, he seen a fire in the streets and rioting in this dream. And in September, he seen another pandemic coming up on the world. And in November, he seen the Oval Office that was empty. The curtains were pulled at the White House and, and people were hiding in their homes for fear. Now, I don't know anything about the man, but that's pretty unusual, but I, I heard one, I don't know if you've heard of Lance Wallnow or Walno. Yes. And then he gave kind of, a, of a, an update on what he thought it was about. And, he, and because of the background of the man and things, like he said he, had, he reads 40 newspapers every morning. That's, that's going to affect your thoughts and your dreams. So I will you, tell you, Brother Gary is talking about a pastor, and probably many of you on Facebook have seen it. It's out there. You can look for it. He is a pastor who had a dream before 2020 about happenings and he put it on record with his elders and with his leadership and they watched that. You know, anybody can jump on it after the fact, but apparently he put this dream uh, on record with the elders to have their proof and confidence that he told them before it happened and what Gary's talking about, he claims that just was fulfilled to the very letter of the dream. And I will tell you this, I'm the least likely, and, and I've never really moved in the revelation gifts like I have seen some preachers. But now folks, uh, I've sat here before God and my wife, I've, I've, I've had a couple of two or three dreams in my life or discerning moments that, that I put on record and, and had them just develop to the T. I mean, because God gave the revelation and, and God showed it, but I, I had the wisdom at the time to put it on record with my wife or brother Homer Alexander. And, and I, I have listened to this. I've had a couple of preacher buddies of mine send this. And we may just go over a little, uh, a little bit tonight. If you got to leave or if you got to turn us off, just go ahead and do it. But we're just going to have a little bit of church here with Bible study. And uh, I, I mean, it's not anything so wild that it wouldn't be believable with the hour we live in. Go ahead, Brother Gary. Yeah, it's interesting that these things have come to pass that he's dreamed, so whether what he dreamed in the future is gonna to come to pass, I don't know. But, but Lance Wallno, I, I really liked his response to it because it took a little bit of the edge off of it, but he, he said he, he compared this to 1 Samuel 23, one through 13, where David was of course, I can't pronounce the name of the city. Which, it doesn't matter. But he was going to take the, he was went to the city to cover the Palestine and run the Palestines out of the city. And then he asked, and then Saul heard about it. And he asked the Lord if Saul was coming to, to take him out in the city and whether these people were going to sell him out in the city. And the Lord said, yes, they are. So that was a, that was a predetermination but it depended on what David did, whether that came to pass or not. And so David left, and this never came to pass. So there's a difference between something that's predetermined and predestined. And he he were compared that to this dream that this pastor had in Kentucky, because if the church does not repent, if the church is not willing to stand up and preach the truth, especially on the subjects of, of things like abortion, on homosexuality, on socialism, 
on seeing if they're not willing now to stand up no matter what the world says and admit that truth then these things probably will come to pass well brother and, and i can jump right on the wagon with you because i i have it written and and i will prove it before we leave uh if if we concede our ground as a church as a people with with conviction well right here it is if we concede our ground it will shake the very foundation of faith in america the very foundation of faith in america and i believe that that that's what's going on i believe they they want the very moral voice of the church in america they shut our churches down and we ran home over COVID. I understand, I understand. I'm, I'm not saying that, that there's not corona in the world, but let's get some of the bigger picture here. Because I believe there's some, if they had their way tonight, that we wouldn't be in this church house right now. I'm just telling you, I, I believe it. Now, if you want to fire me and get somebody else, hey, I'll pack my office up and get out of Dodge. But I'm telling you, I, I believe there's people that would shut this house down. And dark, it's the darkest before the dawn. We know Christ wins. We know his kingdom shall come. But friend, even after Daniel knew the law was signed, he still prayed. He went to the lion's den, but God delivered him. It's like my little grandson telling his mother, Mom, it's not going to be easy to stand. That's why we need to get in this Bible. That's why we need to have some devotions. We need to build ourselves up because it's not going to be easy days. Oh, the three Hebrew children, they knew too, and they didn't bow, and God delivered them. So, Brother Gary, I'm, I'm with you. If, if we concede our voice, if, if we concede preaching with conviction and truth and and confront the hour that's why i'm saying what we're talking about and teaching tonight and the second coming of christ and the rapture of the church and the battle of armageddon the great holocaust that's going to face israel in these short few coming years however many there i'm not a date setter but honey i can see i can see all the signs my dad taught me as a boy, I point out to my wife all the time, I said, it's raining over there. I think one of the first times I said it, she may have said, how do you know? I said, well, look at the clouds. I can see it falling. We're going to drive right into it. Do I have a witness in the house? I learned that when I was a kid. Well, Jesus said, you can see the signs of the time. You can say, hey, it's going to rain, but you can't read my coming. You can't read the rapture. You can't read the the hour of the antichrist uh, i agree hey let me give you a freebie right here on my phone i was kind of fumbling just a minute ago for my phone my preacher buddy over in missouri was at lowell's in uh, uh their the hardware store lowell's over in uh, west, plains. west plains missouri yesterday one one part of the vision that preacher had in that dream, uh, he went somewhere to get change for his garage sale. You remember that bit in there, Brother Gary? Do you know what sign is up in Lowell's in West Plain? I've got it right here on my phone from yesterday. My buddy sent it to me. I'll show it to you right after church. I've got it on that phone laying right there. He went in West Plains, Lowell's. Uh, hardware store and they had a big sign and said the government is having a shortage, of, a shortage of change and coin money and so if you can use a, a what did yeah. they say yeah. a debit card or, or a more direct thing now it's hard for me to believe that they, they've got a shortage of change but some of that was in what the guy had seen and that sign's already up in a store. Now, I don't know if there's anything relative to that, but we know we're going to go to a cashless society, and all of those things make me remember my teaching. Did, anybody, did you have something that, Ernie? Or, well, uh, you know, like I said, uh, I said before, 
I've had a miracle happen with the tree. Mm -hmm. Well, I've had another miracle happen with me. All my life, I have had uh, a uh, stomach problem, and I, I had to take roll aids and and toms and and, uh, and that plus. Uh, Plazolac, and I've had to take it for my gas in my stomach. Well, one day, one night, I, I was going, I had the last Plazolac pedal in my cabinet, and I said, I'm going to uh, have to go get another box. That morning, I woke up, and I had a terrific pain right here in my chest. It was like lightning, or somebody cutting me, or something. You know, and I haven't had gas since. Praise God. So the Lord, Lord touched you. I think his battery just died too. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> praise God, brother. I believe in healing and, and yeah. I'm. And, I, you know, I just, I, but like all my life, I've had, this had problem, that problem. And the, and the Lord just took it away. Praise God. We rejoice on that. Well, Brother Gary, did you have any more on that that you were wanting to share? Well, just a couple reminder on Scripture, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, which I've been talking about for eleven right. years now. If my enemies are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. And also first Peter four seventeen where it says judgment begins at the house of God. Right. We need to be reminded of these things right. of Brother Gary gave the scripture in Second Chronicles seven and what? Where did the verse start? Seven fourteen. Be good for you to read and and the epistle of Peter, the letters of Peter, Second uh, Peter. Uh, I tell you, there is scripture chock full in Peter's writing of last days of end times, and so Matthew twenty four. Now, there's the second coming of Christ taught here, but a, but a lot of us too in Matthew's 24, like there'll be two in the field, one taken, one would be left, have been taught that as the rapture of the church. And theologians say, this isn't the rapture of the church by the pure set of timing. This is Israel during the tribulation period. And, and during that time is when judgment is falling and people aren't going to be able to escape. I mean, uh, just like when Noah preached, uh, there's coming rain, there's coming rain, there's coming a flood. They laughed and they mocked until the door was shut and they couldn't get in. And they said, open to us. Noah opened us. Hey, we want on board now. We believe you now, preacher. And uh, he said, I didn't shut the door and I can't open the door, you know. And, and so in judgment of Israel during this horrible seven-year period, uh, there is going to be destruction that they won't be able to, uh, uh, about 10 million of them, two-thirds of them won't be able to flee fast enough before they're slaughtered. So where are we down here about uh, uh, verse 24? For there shall arise, we'll try to wrap up on this. And Lord willing, uh, in these coming weeks, you know, we'll just keep studying. And this might be slow for some of you, but we're not just trying to run through here. We're trying to find what is relevant uh, to the study here. But notice how he said, there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, which shall show great signs, wonders, insomuch that it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. Now, Brother Ernie talked about having a miracle. I, I believe in the miracle working power of God. Uh, in, in my life, in my body, in my family, uh, we've had some miraculous things happen. But also, we know that in the last days, there are going to be people deceived by lying wonders, by what appears to be a miracle of God, and it is the working of Satan. It, it, is, uh, it is a demonic power. And here's two lessons that I was taught young in my spiritual life, and I have lived by it. 
and they have been guardians in my life. And, and I like sharing it in closing. The spirit and the word always agrees. Amen. The spirit's never going to tell you something contrary to the word. And the word is never going to teach or say something contrary to the spirit. God set that guard up in our life. And that's why he said in 1 John, Beloved, let us try the spirit to see whether they be of God. Just because somebody out in the world uh, would claim they're doing miracles. And what do people flock to? They're going to run to the signs. They're going to run. They're going to flock to the miraculous. Well, honey, it may look miraculous, but if it goes against the spirit of your heart, run. Amen. Do you hear me? Because yeah. the enemy is going to be working in that way in these last days. We're just about right here. Well, saints, if, if you're aware of Armageddon and are, are, are not really deeply taught about it, uh, not only do we have the rapture and we have the seven year tribulation period and when, when all hope is like when Paul was on the ship and going to have the shipwreck where it said all hope that we would be saved and then an angel of the Lord stood by him and said God said everybody stay on the boat we're going to lose the ship but no lives when it looks like Israel surely will be destroyed Jesus is going to split the sky and he's going to visibly come, physically come at that time. And there will be a battle that the flood will fill the valleys of Megiddo. And there is going to be such ravage and such warfare, such destruction. Uh, and God is, is going to, God's going to intervene uh, for Israel and, and he's going to save them but it's going to not be without a great price now note and, and we'll close on this you might look into some of that area of Armageddon here's another thing we are seeing things in our natural world let me just say this in closing we are seeing things in nature that that it's like it's new phenomena. You know, the Bible said that the whole world, Brother Ben, it says that the whole world is groaning and moaning to wit the day of redemption. Even the natural world is, is rocking and reeling to and fro for God to intervene, right? I mean, you hear what I'm saying? Did you know there's coming a day immediately after the tribulation period that the sun's going to be darkened? The moon is not going to give her light. Stars are going to fall from the sky. You think that's going to be a horrendous day? Meteors falling to this world, to this earth. You, you think about scary Un, uh, unnatural not normal days it's going to be a wild ride so much as that the Lord said it's going to be days that the world's never known and after it's over and God settles it the world will never know hey I haven't done too bad we're not quite five minutes over and, and I scared you to death already said well we'll just take some time yeah. Amen. but Anyway, I, I love the study of God's word. Uh, listen, uh, it's not a laughing matter to me. I've staked my life on it because I believe it. Amen. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And, and don't make too much fun of us about this rapture thing because you'll be fulfilling the epistle of Peter that I just told you about. Because he said they would be saying in the last days, mockers and scoffers would be saying, where is the promise of his coming? The Lord's delayed his coming. There ain't no rapture. He ain't going to come back. Well, just as surely as he said it, and just as surely as he told us you'd make fun of us, and you'd say it wasn't going to happen, it makes me believe it even more. 
All right, Lord willing, we're going to be here Sunday. Lord willing, folk back here next Wednesday. Do we have any announcements? Any anything that we need to share? I hope you got something out of this tonight. Uh, hope you received something. Anyone? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word. Let the word of God come alive in our heart. God, I thank you for this gospel. I thank you for revelation. I thank you for the prophetic days that we live in. Father, we want to watch and pray. God, we want to be ready in that hour that you come and you receive your church. As long as we're here, Lord, we want to be a light. As long as we're here, we want to be telling people that they need Jesus. We want to be encouraging people to love you and to serve you. God, help us make a difference in the hearts and the lives of those that are around us. We ask these favors in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. Appreciate you all being here.